Hi, I'm Jeff Murrow. I want to welcome you to True Texas History, where today we are going to take a look at Sam Houston and annexation. Um, I'm putting together this video. There were some questions that came up from uh, my video on the annexation vote of 1845, uh, and I wanted to go ahead and do a video to address those. Um, and so here we are, um, and I'll go ahead and uh, talk about Sam Houston and annexation uh, and try to address those questions. Now, uh, the students of, who have studied uh, Sam Houston's life, there is some speculation uh, that Sam Houston was functioning as an agent of Andrew Jackson when he came down here. Uh, it is true that uh, the Jackson administration had sent him down as an Indian agent and uh, they were trying to pacify a lot of the Indian tribes over uh, in Arkansas and that part of the United States at the time. Um, now in terms of hard documented evidence, uh, it's not there, but there's speculation that uh, Sam Houston was operating as an agent and that uh, he had hoped to bring Texas on into the United States if that's what it was for. Um, and some of this is based on uh, precedents with the Republic of West Florida because uh, with that episode, uh, the United States uh, goes in there during a time of turmoil. Uh, they bring peace and then ask to be uh, brought into the uh, United States. So this similar type of policy, uh, some people were wondering if that's what was going on in Texas. It is true that uh, some of the United States uh, forces uh, in the Army uh, from Louisiana came over and helped uh, Sam Houston at the Battle of San Jacinto. Uh, man his cannons and operate them. Okay, um, it is true that Sam Houston did try to uh, pursue annexation and uh, in his initial administration it didn't work. There was uh, too much unrest uh, in Texas. Mexico was still invading us um, and uh, the anti-Texas sentiment was very high. In fact, uh, the anti-Texas League, uh, they were distributing religious flyers to turn uh, the whole topic of the annexation of Texas into a religious issue where, you know, uh, if you were uh, a good religious person, you would oppose Texas joining the Union. Um, I mean, this, this was a big deal up north, and so uh, the initial efforts failed. Now, during uh, Houston's second uh, administration as president, they uh, tried to get Texas annexed again uh, via a treaty. Now, the treaty was written, uh, and they were getting ready to approve it, uh, but an unforeseen mishap occurred. Um, the President um, of the United States at the time uh, was with his Secretary of State and others on board a Navy vessel to see uh, an experimental gun be fired. Um, now fortunately the President and his wife went below deck to have their champagne glasses refilled and during that time uh, they set off the cannon. The cannon exploded, killing the Secretary of State, who was the one uh, trying to get the Treaty of Annexation through. Now, that first treaty, uh, Texans liked because uh, we put a few strings in there about um, the United States paying our debt, um, which they were supposed to do, uh, except that that's not the treaty that went through. Texas was not annexed via a treaty. I mean, that's one of the falsehoods. It was annexed uh, via an act of Congress. You know, if you get specific about it, uh, this is one of the things in what they call the Missouri Compromise. Uh, 
that it occurred. Now, uh, Houston was not uh, successful in his second term in getting us annexed uh, because in order to get us annexed, he would have to uh, say that we needed United States protection. And this is one reason why he opposed the Texas Navy, because with the Texas Navy, we were uh, projecting our sense of power. I mean, we, we had been involved in the Yucatan Wars. Uh, we had our own Navy. We were protecting our own coast. And of course, Houston would be opposed to that because he wanted us to appear weak so that the United States would be able to come in here and uh, protect us. Um, and... Sam Houston essentially took the attitude, well, you know, if uh, the U.S. Uh, won't dance with us, we'll dance with somebody else. But that raised some questions because uh, as Britain showed an interest uh, in Texas because they wanted Texas to be independent because as long as there was an independent Texas, it was a block between the United States and the West Coast. And the West Coast meant trade with China. And if they could put a uh, block there to stop the United States from expanding, they could get a monopoly on trade in China. So it, it was a big deal. And uh, the United States viewed uh, the involvement of Great Britain uh, in Texas as a violation of the Monroe Doctrine. Um, but that didn't stop them. Uh, very rarely stops the Brits from uh, doing what they do. And during the course of things, Sam Houston had advised Anson Jones, uh, let's see if I can get to the direct quote, that in uh, dealing with all these things uh, and foreign policy, he said Texas, uh, that uh, he needs to be sharp as lynxes and wary as foxes because he knew that everybody was going to be sneaky. Um, and, and the whole thing um, was a sneaky affair. Uh, because they couldn't get it through annex, uh, through treaty because the Senate wouldn't approve it. There weren't enough senators to approve a treaty, so that's why they had to get it through the House as legislation. Um, now, um, did they immediately pay our debt? No. Um, that was part of uh, the deal to go ahead and sell all the Texas land. Uh, that part of Texas that went on up into... Uh, uh, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Kansas, Oklahoma. And Sam Houston was very instrumental uh, in that deal to go ahead and uh, sell that land, pay off the Texas debt. Um, and that angered many Texans. Um, and although it angered them, uh, this is one of the funny things about Texas politics. We can be angry at our politicians, yet we still have a loyalty uh, to some of them. And uh, people were uh, very loyal to Sam Houston uh, because he was seen as uh, the, the father of Texas. Now, one of the questions uh, that was raised with the whole annexation thing, they wanted to know, let's see, let me get the wording. And Sam Houston was elected governor on an anti-secessionist platform. Yes, uh, he was, but the legislature was all very pro-secessionist. So who represents the will of the people? The governor or the people that they elect as their representatives? Which one is going to be uh, a better measure of the attitude of the people? Well, at the time, they went ahead and uh, took an anti-secessionist uh, Texas hero uh, in Sam Houston because they... Uh, knew that during tough times Sam Houston had brought them through and I, I believe that that's why they did it and we had a very pro-secessionist state legislature and the two didn't get along very well um, because uh, Houston uh, fought against it but he loved Texas enough to go ahead and go with Texas whichever way he went now it is interesting to note uh, that uh, upon coming into the Union that uh, although no longer president, um, Sam Houston went ahead and wrote Andrew Jackson and says, you know, Texas is presented as a bride uh, to the United States. Um, 
It's almost like it, it was a setup that that's uh, what he was intending to do. Now there are some uh, some documentation that uh, Sam Houston had an attitude that if the United States had rejected Texas, Texas was going to go it on his own. In fact, you know, there's that quote about it. Um, and uh, he had even drawn maps of Texas stretching all the way to California, uh, and that being uh, Texas. So uh, there's some mixed uh, documentation on Sam Houston and where he stood. Now, in terms of Sam Houston being elected governor in 18... 59 on the anti-secessionist. Um, I think the election was more than just about secession because uh, his opponent, Hardin Runnels, uh, was very opposed to giving large land grants to railroads. And uh, he had been in the, well, he was governor before Sam Houston. And uh, he continued in that vein. Houston comes along, well, we'll give him a little more. Um, and so, essentially, you know, big business or big railroad was behind uh, Sam Houston against Hardin Runnels. That may have been a fact. I'm not sure. But you have to look at history within the context in which it occurs. I think that's one reason why uh, a lot of this revisionist stuff uh, is problematic because they don't look at historical events uh, in context. Instead, they look at it through a modern lens. But I wanted to go ahead and clarify some of these issues about uh, Sam Houston uh, and the whole annexation question, and hopefully this will clarify uh, some of these. Let's make sure I went through uh, one comment. You must be a Texas President Lamar supporter who was commander-in-chief of the failed Texas Santa Fe expedition. Yes, but he was also in command of uh, several other things that Texas did successfully. Uh, and he laid the groundwork for the Texas educational system. Lamar did a lot of wonderful things uh, because after that, St. Houston was reelected and he immediately moved for annexation. Yeah, uh, we covered that. Let's see, Texans don't know their own history. Texas annexation was St. Houston's life work, I would agree. Uh, and he finally succeeded uh, well. It was under Anson. It was under President Anson Jones where annexation was approved, not under President Sam Houston. Uh, so, technically, Anson Jones uh, was the one that did it, not Sam Houston. President Polk and other Southern states lobbied hard to get Texas in the Union, c correct? And two extra senators in the Senate, correct? Uh, and the main point for annexation was because Texas was bankrupt because of war debt. Uh, yes, that is true. We had problems and we couldn't pay uh, many of our people. Uh, Texas couldn't secure our own borders. Uh, well, Mexico refused to honor uh, Texas independence. Uh, the Indians were a problem. Um, and, well, uh, in terms of the state of Texas, may have to do a video on that, uh, which was going on. And I did deal with the anti secessionist platform. So I have dealt with those questions. I hope you enjoy it. And if you have future questions, feel free to leave them. I'll be glad to get to them. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you clarified some things. If you have further questions, let me know. Uh, feel free to give me a thumbs up. And until next time, this is Jeff Murrow wishing you via con Dios, my friends. Goodbye.